everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you had a, a, you had a great week. Um, today, we are going to be talking with Laramie. He's going to be demonstrating how we're going to be changing the micro switches on your hybrid gen. Uh, I'm super excited because I learned so many great things here with Laramie. So, uh, we're going to want to take it away. Make sure that you like, share, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, take it away, yeah. Laramie. So, on these hybrid series units that we have, all uh, these small ones all the way down to 208cc, all the way up to 439cc, um, they're operated by micro switches whenever you're swapping between gas and propane. Um, and some of the times, whenever you're using them, those switches can become loose or you know rusted or possibly even break. So, today we're going to walk you through how to change them in case you ever need to. So, Megan, if you want to bring the camera in closer, and then I'll get started here. So whenever you first start, the first thing you want to do is to drop this panel down just to make the access to these micro switches behind the panel a lot easier. So you're going to do that by taking out these six 10 millimeter bolts. And I have an impact here, but you can use a wrench or whatever you have handy. six off you have to also remove these three that hold on the LPG regulator um, this will keep the panel from rolling down so just ten right here and then once you get those off just remove this little top cover pull it up a little bit and just pick up a hair on this and then you can angle it down just like this and Megan if you want to come up top here and then you can get a really good view of these micro switches back behind that panel. So this one right here, this is the main micro switch one. This is the off function. This one right here is the micro switch one. This controls the propane side and the other one's kind of difficult to see because it's down there, but it's the exact same as that first micro switch. And so if you ever need to swap them, all you do is just take a screwdriver and you'll just loosen this Phillips head screw that's right on top here. try and get a better view it's kind of tricky <laughs> folks at home yeah it's a really tight spot in here uh if you're having trouble seeing on the video you can always call our tech team at 844-347-6261 and we have technical publications that show really good close-up pictures of this process and once you get the screw all the way out and you should be able to just pop it out of its little housing and there it is right here. Um, it's kind of difficult to get in here. Uh, you can pull them loose, or sometimes you may need to cut this little zip tie right here. And then just remember, uh, before you do this, uh, like this one already came out, it goes right here. But you wanna make sure that before you go to start taking these wires off, that you take a picture of each side on that side, and then this side, that way you always remember where the wires go. A great um, idea. Or my recommendation would be to hold the next micro switch. Just hold it right here side by side and then just do one wire at a time. Okay. But again, if you do ever mess it up, we have the wiring diagrams available. So just feel free to give us a call and we can get those sent to you. That way, if you make a mistake. Uh, the other thing I would recommend too is when you're pulling these, make sure that you grab them by the spade connector here. And they should just, sometimes you have to wiggle them, but they should just slide right off but okay. sometimes they can be crimped on there pretty good. Uh, and you wanna make sure that you don't pull that whole spade connector off of the wire. So if you have to use pliers or something, make sure that you grab the spade connector and not the wire. Otherwise you run the risk of ripping that wire out of the socket. But once you get it all replaced, then it's just as simple as putting it right back into the housing. Just flip it right back over and make sure the switch right here is facing on the inside. Just pop it right back into place. And then sometimes, like this one, it can be a little bit tricky to get it in there. If you're having trouble fitting it all the way down in, just simply turn the fuel selector over to one of the other switches. I just want to do one more time. So just press down with your thumb on the on back the side of here, mm -hmm. and then just rotate this switch over into another position, and that'll free up you a little bit of clearance to get it sucked down where it's supposed to be. Okay. Now, is that red light supposed to be on? Yeah, it's just on just because I have it over to the gas side. Just wanted to make so sure. So as long as we have the... Uh, 
as long as we did our job right and we swapped this main micro switch, as soon as we flip it over to the off position, it, good, it should go straight off. Okay, so then once you get that all swapped out, then again, you see the red light's on, and if you did everything correct, you flip it to off, the red light goes off, and you're good to go. Awesome. And then the same thing, uh, the other ones can be a little trickier, so if you ever need to swap the micro switch one, then if you want to come around on the side here, it's the exact same process. You'll just come in here from the side, and just the screw is located right here. And it's the exact same process. You just take the screw out and then swap these red and the white wires. Those ones are a lot easier because there's only the two. And then the third one is right here on the top. Move these wires out of the way so you guys can see. You want to come around here, Megan? And it's located right here. And the screw to replace it with is right there. Awesome. All right. Yep. And that's pretty much it. Once you get everything uh, back together, just make sure all your wires and everything are all firmly connected. And then just this panel, uh, I would recommend starting all these by hand, just because you really, you don't want to cross thread these, because then again, it's going to be really difficult to get these bolts back in. Okay. So I would definitely recommend starting them all by hand. And then once you get these up here, then you can come back in and work on getting this guy lined all back up and you can see all three of the bolt holes on here get all these lined up then you can just tighten them back down. And it's also really good that you mentioned earlier, if you're doing this and you run into any problems or if you yeah. just need a hand, um, you that. simply contact our, our tech team, um, either via chat, via email, or you can give us a call. They're always here to help, which is great. And we also have some technical publications as well. We can email them to you. So that way you can, if you'd like to read instructions, we have that available and they come with some images so you can see more closely. It was kind of hard to get back there while you yeah, were working one. on that. Um, but now what if, so, and if they need these parts or any parts, yeah. they simply call us and we'll yeah, go ahead and ship them out. 844-347-6261 and we'll be able to send them any parts that they need to take care of. Awesome. Well, while Laramie's finishing up there, we'll uh, just make sure that you tune in with us uh, at the end of this week on Friday. Jason will be live from Bo's Extravaganza. So that will be a fun event. And then we uh, hope you guys have a great rest of your week. And Laramie, thanks yeah. again for taking time to show us how to do this. Oh, we really appreciate yeah. that. No problem. Thank you guys for watching. Awesome. You guys have a great week.